Well, good morning, family. Good morning. I see a lot of familiar faces, but I see some that are not familiar to me. My name is Tim, and uh, I had the pleasure of serving here from 2017 to 2021. And so it's been a couple years, but we're back in town for the weekend, and I get to uh, lead y'all in communion. So, to start the new year, I am reading through the New Testament again, and that is where this communion comes from. It is taken from Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to 36, if you'd like to turn there. You don't have to, but that was Matthew 9, verses 35 and 36. So this is entitled, Moved with Compassion. Now, as I said, I've been reading the New Testament to start this new year. So in Matthew chapters 1 through 4, we read about Jesus' birth, baptism, temptation, and calling the disciples. In Matthew chapters 5 through 7, we read Jesus' famous sermon, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. And in Matthew chapters 8 and 9, we read a series of several miraculous events, including several healings, such as leprosy, lameness, blindness. He calmed the stormy sea. He cast out demons. And there was even a resurrection. And then at the end of Matthew chapter 9, in verses 35 to 36, it says... Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Think about that. When Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them. So I was reflecting on this idea of compassion, and I looked up where in the Bible it talks about that. And here are just three examples. Compassion is what the king had for his servant, who was so indebted to him he could never pay him back. And the king forgave that debt. Compassion is what it says the good Samaritan had for the man lying by the side of the road who had been beaten and robbed. And compassion is what it says the father had for his prodigal son when he returned home and ran out to greet him. Having compassion is more than just an idea or an emotion. It means being moved deep in your heart at the sight of someone else's suffering and making an effort to do something about that. Why do I say that? Because that's exactly the example that Jesus set for us because he did that for us. So Matthew 9, 36, which we read, it says, Jesus was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered Mm -hmm. like sheep having no shepherd. What moved Jesus to compassion in this moment wasn't their illness and infirmities, It was how the people were weary and scattered. Now, what does that mean? It was their need for and lack of a spiritual shepherd to care for their weary of sin, spiritually tossed about souls. So listen to what Hebrews 5.2 says. He, Christ, can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray. That's, That's us. That's the world since he himself is also subject to weakness. And then Hebrews 2, 17 to 18 explains a little more what that means. Therefore, in all things, he, Christ, had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. 
For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted, all of us. So by becoming human, Jesus suffered temptation just like every other human. He experienced our human weakness for himself, enabling him, the scriptures say, to be our compassionate high priest who made final payment for our sins and reconciled us to God. So let's bring these ideas together. The word of God looked down on humankind and saw our suffering under sin. So he came to earth as a man, suffered a temptation for himself, and took action to bring us freedom from our suffering under sin. Freedom from sin's penalty at the cross, freedom from sin's power through the Spirit, and freedom from sin's presence when we enter enter into eternity. So here's what that means for our suffering. As believers, any suffering remaining this side of heaven will do just that. It will remain this side of heaven when we die and pass through heaven's gates into eternity with our Lord. And so, if you have your communion cup... So there's two layers here. We've got a little layer of uh, just cellophane here on top to get to the wafer. And you got the tab there to help get to the juice. Took me a while to figure out that out. So we have the wafer or the bread, which represents the body of Christ, which was broken for us. So let's take and eat. And then we have the cup, the juice, which represents Christ's blood of the new covenant shed for the remission of our sins. Let's take and drink. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Father, we we say thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus our compassionate high priest who looked on us and was moved deep within himself to carry out your rescue plan to come to earth and to rescue us from our suffering, our suffering under sin, and then our suffering forevermore in eternity. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.